Okay guys, today on Talk About Games we are talking about The Messenger, which is a brand new game from Devolver Digital, and it is a Ninja Gaiden, Metroidvania style game, and we're going to tell you about it right now. So you were playing the game, um, what's your first impressions about it? The first thing I thought right off the bat is, the thing I hate about Ninja Gaiden is that the enemies respawn. Ah. Okay, yeah. and the enemies respawn in places that make it hard to progress through the level. Mm -hmm. And that's the main reason I don't like Ninja Gaiden. I like the music, I like the gameplay, I like so much about Ninja Gaiden. But the thing that really bothers me is that the enemies respawn the respawning off the screen in yeah. horrible places. Yes. In The Messenger, the enemies respawn, but it's not a problem. It is a fixed problem. There is one thing I do want to say about Ninja Gaiden, and I felt that same way my whole life until just recently. There, There is an item in Ninja Gaiden where, when you spin through the air yeah. and you can kill everything. If you try to keep that item throughout the stages... It makes it a lot easier. It makes it a lot easier because then you can kill those enemies to just keep going. Yeah. Because Ninja Gaiden is a game when you want to just keep moving. Right. And if you stop moving, that's when you get hit and then those problems occur. So um, what's interesting, speaking of Ninja Gaiden, this game is inspired by Ninja Gaiden and the guys who actually made Ninja Gaiden did a little video, uh, it's on YouTube and I think it's on Devolver's channel where um, they played this game and it's really, it was really cool to see, I don't know if you've seen it yet, but um, to see the guys who actually made the original Ninja Gaiden play this game and it seemed like they were really enjoying it and they were into it. This game, um, I'm gonna set, tell you right off the bat, I just beat the game last night and this is, Probably, this is the best game I've definitely played this year, and that's even after saying that you know I played Bloodstained, mm -hmm. and I love Bloodstained, but I like this even better. I don't even know where to begin with this. So this is, um, it's inspired by Ninja Gaiden. The first half of the game is 8-bit style, and then later on it goes into a 16-bit style. What did you think about the about the two, the 8-bit versus the 16-bit, and like how that looked? At first I was really scared that the mechanics would change in an unpleasing way when I switched to 16-bit because like you, going back like we said Ninja Gaiden is an 8-bit game. 8-bit mm -hmm. games feel many of them they feel faster they feel more it's simpler it's really easy to see where the characters are that kind of thing. I think that they handled it very well. Yeah. The transition between the two I didn't really feel like I had to think about oh now my character is 16-bit the one thing I, I do have to say is a lot of the music and sound effects going for the 16-bit vibe. I prefer the simpler 8-bit, like the death sound, yeah. the slashing sound. Yeah. The, that might just be nostalgia talking. I You know, a lot but, of times when you when you die, uh, there was always the sort of it was almost like made me laugh, and the game has a sense of humor to it, where it almost sounds like Donkey Kong or something. Yeah. Like when you die, it's like da 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 da, whatever. Yeah. It's, it's actually pretty funny. So I actually I think I preferred a little bit more the the eight bit style um, of the graphics, um, except for the killer hat. He looked like Raiden or something. Yeah, yeah. it's funny. There, there's a shopkeeper who follows you through the game. Kung Lao, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And the uh, shopkeeper, one time, did you notice? One time you go in the shop. When you first go to 16-bit, yeah. you go in the shop and he says, nice hat. Yeah, yeah. And then the next time you go into the shop, he's wearing the hat. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, he won't, and, um, and that really talks about the game has a great sense of humor. It does, and... A lot of games try to do humor, and it's so cringy and bad. This one actually made me laugh, and that is <laughs> that is rare because I don't I don't laugh at this kind of this kind of shit. Like a lot of times, I just think it's corny. Yeah, they, it was actually pretty well written, and and the way the characters interact and stuff. Now, anybody who watches my streams or watches James and Mike Mondays right. or any of the videos that we've done, Skip. You, you, you <laughs> got, yeah, you guys know that I get very tired very quickly of story stuff, but this. It's not that I don't like story, it's that I like story when it's done how I feel is the right way and how I typically like my story is I want to be able to enjoy the gameplay first and then have story elements come in later because let's say you're playing a game right. and there's 
15 minutes, it starts off with 15 minutes of story, and then you get to the gameplay, and then let's say, then you don't like the gameplay. Well, now you just watched a 15 minute thing about something that you don't like the game, and now you're gonna turn it off right. because you don't like it. Give me, let me play the game for a little while and be like, okay, I like this game, I'm having fun with it, and then start incorporating some story elements, and that's how they did it here. And um, I've noticed uh, some of these indie games and stuff uh, doing that lately. Or, ma or making fun of that. Uh, I, I did Mini Doom 2, and that right. starts off right in the beginning, and they just kind of like make fun of that. Because Doom is a game that yeah. just starts, it's like, you're just going. Boom! Boom, you're, and you're, just, <laughs> you're just going. So this is a game that did story right, and that's coming from me, who's yeah. not even a big story guy. I like gameplay first. Um, and so speaking of the gameplay, th this game is fast moving, like Ninja Gaiden, but we keep throwing out the term Ninja Gaiden. It's not just inspired by Ninja Gaiden. This game is later on becomes a Metroidvania. The first section of the game is linear. The second section of the game becomes Metroidvania with a lot of backtracking. Now when that first started happening, I, it was a little jarring to me because I got so used to it being linear that when it start, started going, and that's when you turn into Kung Lao or whatever. Right. When it went to that, I was kind of like, eh, because I was getting so used to it. But after, 20 minutes I was like okay this is just as good as it's been so that that didn't detract it for me it, it's funny so the game starts the game's like I'm Ninja Gaiden and then like secrets start happening and it's like I'm DuckTales or Shovel Knight yeah and then it's like just kidding I'm also it's it's, it's a everything Metroidvania this game is just like look we're these guys are really good at what they're doing and they're gonna continually show you how good they are throughout you talk to the shopkeeper, now it's Monkey Island. You know, yeah. it's like... It's also like a bit Back to the Future too with that yeah. plot. So um, at different uh, points uh, throughout the game, they st they do gradually give you different pieces of the plot. Yeah. And it's, it's a time travel story, but it's a time travel story with a sense of humor, kind of like Back to the Future too. Yeah. Um, that's the only thing I can really equate it to because it's just... The people who made it knew that it was ridiculous, and I think that they were trying to go back to... Okay, you think of the old NES games and right. Super Nintendo games, they always had like the most ridiculous plots ever. Right. I think that they were like, okay, let's just like make it like it used to be. Like, let's just make a crazy ass plot, and that's what they did. My my two favorite video games when it comes to narrative are, like I just said before, Monkey Island and Star Control 2. I think that those two games, this game is like a spiritual cousin of those two games because it has the crazy characters. It. It breaks the fourth wall, but not in a Deadpool-like way. You know, where Deadpool's like just in your face yeah. and meme -y. Yeah. This game is like a pr has like pre-meme jokes in yeah, it. Yeah. You know, it's more like yeah. from that bygone era of PC games. It's it's really well executed. And as I was playing, I wrote down a couple notes of some of the different um, things. Now, one of the things that you'll notice right off the bat is the game's uh, menu is essentially, or the map, I should say, is Ghost and Goblins. Yeah. Like, it, it's just got that, you know, horizontal ma map, and I think that's definitely what they were thinking. Later on, there are um, little plants that you mm -hmm. jump in that, that shoot you out, and you can kind of guide the direction of it. It's very much like Donkey Kong Country where, right. with the barrels. Right. The dragon uh, that you ride is very much like uh, Never Ending Story. Yeah. You know, all that. Um, yeah, so or is it the... The dragon, it, it reminded me a little bit of like Secret of Mana, the dragon from that. I forget his name. You, you have the drum. I don't know. It's you been know, a while. You know that game better yeah. than I do. So. I, I don't want to say his name wrong. I think it's like Flammy or Lammy yeah. or something. I, I haven't played that game in years, but it reminded me a little of that when you're first escaping from the area that you're in. By the way, I kind of don't want to do spoilers for this one because okay. I think you should play it. I want to talk a little bit about the bosses. As you go through the game, the bosses, um, this is where, I guess, uh, you have your sort of Mega Man, Robot Master, or Ninja Gaiden enemies, where you have to learn a pattern. Yeah. Some of the bosses are much easier than others. Sometimes I beat the bosses in one try. Other times, some of these bosses, I had to do 15, 20 times until I was able to beat them. So, uh, the game does have uh, a good variety of bosses. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have a favorite boss that you fought or anything? There were two bosses that that really came out to me. The, the The first one is you fight, you you get to the end where you're about to go to the 16-bit part, mm -hmm. and you fight oh. a boss that you see in the beginning of the game. 
And that fight is really memorable because it's just hard. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. And you use all the abilities that you picked up from the beginning. I think that one's good. But the, there were two sections of the game where I'm like, I think the developers were playing two games when they developed this. When I fought the green boss, the green... The emerald dude. Emerald boss. Yeah. I was like, these guys were playing Cuphead when they made this boss. <laughs> right? Because it yeah. has the, the two phases. Yeah. And it has the big face. Uh -huh. And I'm like, man, they were playing Cuphead. And then when you're going in the tower... Which uh, is not a bad game to emulate. By the way, I like Cuphead's Cuphead. awesome. Yeah. When you go... When you're going up the tower with all the lasers... Mm -hmm. um, when I was going through that laser part, I was like, I bet you they were playing Mario Odyssey. Because you have all those things that beam you around. Okay. And you know, yeah. in Mario Odyssey, they beam you around. Yeah. And I'm like, I bet you that the, these two elements were inspired I by those two playing, games. I think they were playing a lot of things. Yeah. Because, because there's little bits and pieces from but, from just about everything. But, th but those two, I'm like, man, it's towards the middle of the game. When were they working on that? Oh, probably last Christmas when those things came out. And yeah, it, there's some inspiration there. There was a boss that came later. Uh, it's a it's a butterfly, and that's all I'll say. Yeah. Um, so you're fighting you're fighting that, and I thought that th this was really interesting because it ro reminded me of a section in Castlevania Bloodlines. Um, so this butterfly sprinkles down uh, some kind of dust on you, which confuses you. So yeah. when you hit left on the D-pad, you're going right. Oh, I hate that. Yeah, and when you are when you hit right, you're going left and that kind of thing. And there's a little there's a little teeny platform you're standing yeah. on, so you can easily like fall off of it. And you'll have to jump to the right, but you have to push left to jump, you know? It's like, yeah. it's like that kind of thing. And I remember near the end of Castlevania Bloodlines, there's a section like that, and I, and I hated it. But, um, but as I kept doing it over and over, you learn how to avoid getting hit by that, so that, right. so that you don't, you know you don't die and stuff like that. And yeah. the, the boss fights were really interesting, and you know I was trying to think a lot about this game. I was trying to think what is what is negative about this game. I thought the the music was amazing, the gameplay is amazing. the The only thing I think that I could think of that was that was negative maybe is that it's derivative of so many other games. A lot of people might say, well, all it is is Ninja Guy, and all it is is you know all they're doing is copying the old games. But they do it, first of all, they do it so well. It's a loving tribute to it. And it's not like they don't add in things that are original. Had they not, then, may then maybe, yeah. But uh, some of the gameplay mechanics, I hadn't seen things like before. I don't know if you got to the area where there was little Firefly. Uh, yeah, they I expand yeah, out and you can I go in there. I call them like time bugs. Yeah. So you, you hit them and they expand out and when you go into the little uh, area that it expands into, like, like then you're in 8-bit where the rest of the world is in 16-bit or yeah. vice versa. And I don't think I've seen much of that in other games. And, and there's other mechanics in the game that were original to this game. So while it's inspired by those, those old games, you get these new elements and I just thought, this is how you do it. It is so much fun to move around the environments. And I think that really starts with the fact that when you hit things while you're in the air, it refreshes your jump. And I think that that's like the core mechanic that everything about this game grows off of. Mm -hmm. So if I'm in the air, I jump, I slash a torch for lack of a better term, my jump refreshes, I could jump again. Oh, now I'm gonna slash an enemy projectile. Now I can jump again. Now, I, that took me a little while to get the hold of. So there's like a lantern or something, you jump off of it. Um, you can just slash at it and do that, but you can also do a thing where you tap both buttons and oh, I don't know if you got it yet, but there's there. I know there's the wingsuit, but then after that, you get the upgrades from the shop, shop, and then you can slice down as yeah, well. Yeah, I have that. Yeah, you have that. So yeah, you slice down, and then, so in, in combined with that, so first of all, you can bounce off things by slicing. Then you can um, also then you know you can float with the wingsuit, and then later you get the like hook shot. Yeah. And they, they even make a joke about it. They're like, you're gonna call this the grappling hook. Yeah. But really it's, yeah, like again, the breaking the fourth wall. And then there's also, uh, you know, you have like shurikens to throw and all kinds of stuff. And the game is just so fun because it's just, it has that Ninja Gaiden style yeah. gameplay where it's just so fast moving. And, and you know, there's, there's, a, there's a section later where you just have to run and run and run like like really fast and it, that reminds me of Ninja Gaiden where they just want you to keep moving. And yeah. I feel like I, you know, I'm not a speedrunner, but I bet you there's going to be people that are going to want to try to speedrun through this game because it's, since it's a game where you're just running and running and moving and moving, it's just, it's... Yeah, like the moving through environments is a big deal. And 
yeah, there, there's, there are multiple times in the game where things chase you, and you better be on point with the jumps oh my when God. the things chase you. Because yeah, when you make one mistake, you're, you're, you're done. Like, like, here's the thing to think about. The thing is chasing you. You have this much space. Oh, I didn't jump quite quickly. Now I have this much space. Yeah. Oh, I get caught up with an enemy. Now I have this much space. During those segments, you cannot hit the back button. Yeah. You just can't. That You are moving that way or that way. And that's all there is to it. So I want to talk about the, the challenge of this game. Um, a lot of times people were asking me, you know, is it as challenging as Ninja Gaiden? Uh, you know, which is harder? Is this game harder than Ninja Gaiden? And I think that there are boss battles and things in this game that are probably harder than things you will find in Ninja Gaiden. However, I'm still going to say that Ninja Gaiden is harder, and that is because this game has a lot of save points and yep. checkpoints. Ninja Gaiden doesn't really. Like, Ninja Gaiden will send you the fuck back real far, and, that, and that's it. And also, then there's also, like, your limited um, continues and stuff, where if you die enough, you, the game, yeah. game's over. Where this game, you can keep going and going and going. There's no, there's no point where they're gonna send you yeah. all the way back to the beginning. This game will mock you though. This game will be like, you died 63 times. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, there's a little devil that mocks you. Yeah, and he'll take your money away. Oh, one thing yeah. that I did wrong, and a little piece of advice is, uh, there's an item that you can get from the shop to, um, it halves the to, number. To halves the number. Like I got that like later on. I should have got that earlier. And actually, one of the one of the big things about it that I didn't um, that I was screwing up on for a while, and I think why it took me a little longer to get through the game than it should have, is if you're having any trouble figuring out where to go, what you have to do is go to the shop. And there's two guys in the shop. Um, there's one there's one guy that gives you like a prophecy. Yeah. And you're you're like, okay, what the hell's he talking about? But then you go to the shop owner. And you ask him, you're like, hey, I was just talking to the prophecy guy. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. And he's like, well, give me three hundred, you know, dollars or whatever, and then I'll explain it to you. And then he puts a little marker on your map, which yeah. shows you where to go. And I didn't know that at first, so I was just like, where do I go right now? So I was getting a little lost. And during that time, I was just going around and looking for Say, those little green. Should have read jars. the dialogue boxes right when the prophecy guy is prophesizing. He's like, yo, if you really want to know what's going on, I'll do it for you if you have the coin. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. I think I think that might have been a uh, Elder Scrolls callback to you know if you have the coin, yeah, uh, Kaji guys. Okay. So I think that maybe they were making a joke about that, but they There's hint, a lot of humor. They that. hint at it a little bit. Yeah. Um. So also, uh, yeah. I want to mention. So a lot of times in these indie games, um, I played a bunch of indie games that are really good, yeah. but a lot of times the one thing that they slack on a little bit is the music. Um, this game where I'm gonna I'd say uh, Bloodstained. I love Bloodstained, but the one thing about Bloodstained that I thought was average was the music. Yeah. Good. It was good music, but it wasn't amazing. This was one of the first games in a long time where they they also did the music right. Like that. This music in this game got me pumped up, and I'm still I have the tunes in my head, and that's what I always say. I'm like. What happened to those tunes like Mega Man 2 and stuff, stuff that you're driving down the road and you're humming the tunes? This game literally has that, and I have not seen that in a while. I met the composer, really? uh, Pax West. Yeah, and he was a really cool dude. Well, props to him because he, yeah. he did it. He did amazing. He did yeah. an amazing job. I'm like, and I let him know. I'm like, this game is like, yeah, yeah, and and he's really cool, down to earth dude. And that's, sounds that's just, nice the soundtrack's know. available, so you can pick that. Oh, up. I didn't know that. That's yeah. actually kind of cool. I might buy that. <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> I might buy that on CD, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Oh. You're like <laughs> it's not exactly. available on like a cassette. Yeah, yeah. I've got to get it on. Yeah, CED. Yeah. <laughs> the first yeah. video Ryan was ever in the CD. Oh, video. Video. oh, by the way, this had um, Medusa heads in it too. Yeah, but they're big. Yeah, I mean they're not actually Medusa heads; they're like yeah. dragons or something like that. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So this is the one to beat right now, I think, in this like indie retro. 
look at space. Oh, you mean you mean to make a game better than this? Yeah, yeah. I I like it. I like it better than Shovel Knight. Like I really like Shovel Knight. Oh, no, I like this better than Shovel Knight. Too. I like it better than Shovel Knight. And Shovel Knight was like the high watermark for me for this. Yeah. Like, I felt like Shovel Knight was was really good. I yeah. think that this game is. It's it's with the classics. You go back. You look at your. Ninja Gardens and your Super Metroids and your Castlevanias. This is like a modern day classic that can run with those gigantic games of the past. We we've been seeing some real quality stuff come out lately. I mean, you have you have Shovel Knight, you have Bloodstained, you, now you have this. Um, there's been a lot of people and and you know indie companies games come out on Steam every day practically or every you know every week. There's a batch of them and. You know, there's been a lot of them that I played that are kind of like, you know, okay. But there's been some that have been coming out recently that are like, wow, they're like they're getting really good now. Mm -hmm. And if I hope this trend can continue of releasing these high quality retro style games because I'm really enjoying them and this is this is the best one that I've probably played. Yeah, I I was so scared. You know, Castlevania Symphony of the Night comes out, and then for for years, half a decade, maybe more. They stop making 2D games, mm -hmm. and then you start seeing like Castle Crashers comes out, and that's like more Flash era. It's not like yeah. the classic. Yeah. Like it's good, but it's different. Spe speaking of like flashy, flashier, yeah. not to not to cut you off, but did you see the uh, the street uh, Streets of Rage four trailer? Oh yeah. I watched it, and uh, I don't know if you've seen it, but basically it's just it, the, most of the thing from what I saw was it was just like a, it's like a cartoon, right? And they, and they didn't show much gameplay, and then they show a couple flashes of the gameplay, and I hate when they do that. When yeah. Just like show us the gameplay instead of like these big like cutscenes or whatever. But anyhow, so then they show the cutscene, and it does it's not like it's, sixteen bit it's style. It's it, it's like fla like flash yeah. kind of thing. And well, we got we got Double Dragon, yeah. and we got River City Ransom. Yeah. So. Streets of Rage is like the one that needs to get done now. Yeah. And they better not screw it up. Well, that's what I'm saying. They're, they're doing it, and I first my first glance was like... Yeah. Come well, on. look look what happened with Double Dragon Neon. Fine game. Nothing wrong with Double Dragon Neon. But Double Dragon 4 is better. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you know, so... Back, back to my point, really. I was saying that there was this huge amount of time where we didn't have this kind of game. And now we're spoiled because we're getting them all the time. Mm -hmm. That's true. And I and I thought it was over. I thought we were never going to see these games. Thank thank God because yeah, you know, you know. this is what I like yeah. like like look. I play a lot of games. You know, I play PUBG. I play Warcraft. I play new stuff. We're playing this game called Scum now. I don't know that one. Yeah. Okay. This is the game. These are the games I want to play. Like, really, like, sure, I'll play other games, but I want to play games where I run around as a side scroller, I got no patterns. It I depends what it, it depends what it is, because like, yeah. I'll sit and play like Grand Theft Auto V all fucking day long. Right. You know, there's there's certain games. I love Assassin's Creed Origins. I yeah. put, put a zillion hours into that. So I mean, I, yeah. I like that, but but yeah, seeing games like this come out that are actually really high quality is yeah. awesome. Yeah. Because there's a million that that aren't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and oh, by the way, I wanted to mention this. So, back in the day, when you go to Toys R Us or KB or something like that, a game like Castlevania or Ninja Gaiden, what would it have cost? Roughly. What is it like? Like fifty bucks, forty yeah. bucks, something. You know how like much that? game this is? Twenty. Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. For it's it, it's it's a value compared to like going to the movies. You go to the movies now, twelve bucks. 13 bucks. 12 bucks is the popcorn, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and you eat the popcorn. <laughs> dude, this is the popcorn, man. You go. Yeah. It's all it is. And and you might ask, I don't know if, yeah. if I said yet, but uh, so I beat, like I said, I beat the game. I put in about 20, roughly 20 hours into the game. I also, by, somebody said like, oh, just check Steam for how many hours. But I left the computer on. If you do <laughs> it's that, like you played for 30 500 hours. 500 hours, yeah. 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 So my actual play time, it was at roughly about uh, 20 hours. Yeah. And 20 hours is fucking good. Like you can play, like Ninja Gaiden, like one, like yeah. you can do it in if well I mean yeah. it's a hard game so it depends but like you can get through that game in like an hour if you know what you're doing yeah. or an hour and a half or something um, 
this game to like 20 hours. Plus, I haven't even gotten all the green things. Yeah. Like, there's more collectibles Who knows what's to in get. That and, yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, Jeez. you have to collect all these um, musical notes, yeah. and you got to collect these guys that look like me tools. They're called Fibakins, which are actually yeah. th that's another I th I thought uh, throwback to Mega Man. Um, um, it, it's this is so good. I'm hoping, w without spoiling, I'm hoping that there's a way to play as the guy that you briefly meet when it stops being linear. See, this is where we might get into spoilers, and I don't want to go there. That I so just, I'll tell you after this. <laughs> I just, you can tell me yeah. what happens. Yeah. But it would be really cool if you could play as that guy that you briefly meet. Do you know who I'm talking about? I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Yes. That would be really cool mm -hmm. so we'll talk about that yeah. offline mm -hmm. yeah and by the way i don't know i, I haven't gotten that yeah. far yet. i feel like right now like we like this game so much we probably sound like we're this is a commercial for the game right but like uh i just honestly feel that way and you guys yeah. who watch my streams know i just i love like, this like, game like, so like, like honestly like 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 full disclosure i want to go play it right? like i literally want to go play it right it's now. it's good that's how good it is so i mean there's nothing more we could say really about about yeah. it. I don't think we've ever been so positive about. Yeah, a game. Th th this is the this is the game that we've most universally liked on this show. Period. End of story. Yeah. So so check it out.